Hello everyone and welcome back to another mini-sode of How Did We Not Know That? I'm Nat and today's episode is the fourth and final part in our mini-series on permanently inhabited U.S. territories. To wrap up the series, we're going back to the Pacific to talk about a group of islands known as American Samoa. note before I continue, a lot of people call it Samoa, but the correct pronunciation is actually Samoa, so now you know. American Samoa is located in the South Central Pacific in Polynesia and is roughly halfway between New Zealand and Hawaii. Today there are actually two Samoas. American Samoa is the eastern group of islands and the independent state of Samoa is the western part. But thousands of years before they were separated, the Samoan archipelago was settled by Polynesians who were most likely coming from Tonga. In 1722, Jacob Ragavine, a Dutch navigator, landed on Samoa, and after this, many other European explorers and traders came to the islands as well. Throughout the 18th and 19th century, several European missionaries were sent to the islands to convert Samoans to the Christian European way of life. The U.S. later became very interested in the strategic location of Samoa, and in 1878, they signed a treaty with the local government that led to the establishment of a U.S. naval station in Pongopongo Harbor. But the U.S. wasn't the only one interested in the group of islands, and in 1899, the Tripartite Convention was signed between the U.S. and Germany. As a result, Germany gained control of the western half of the islands, and the U.S. took the eastern half. A couple decades later, on April 17, 1900, American Samoa officially became a territory of the U.S. The U.S. Navy governed the islands and continued to develop the naval bases there, giving Samoan leaders very little administrative power over their people. In 1956, control over that territory was handed to the Department of the Interior, where it resides today. The U.S. appointed the governor of the islands, who in turn appointed other political advisors and civil servants. But American Samoans were resilient and fought for control over their country. Islanders gained the authority to draft its own constitution in 1967 and establish a self-governing political system. And 10 years later, American Samoans elected their first governor. American Samoa is an unincorporated, unorganized territory of the United States. It is the only U.S. territory that doesn't grant automatic citizenship at birth, which means that the people of American Samoa are U.S. nationals, not citizens. As U.S. nationals, they have the right to enter and reside in the U.S. And like the other U.S. territories, they can't vote for president, they don't pay federal taxes, and they are allowed one non-voting delegate to the House of Representatives. However, American Samoans still have a very strong sense of nationalism, and the territory actually has the highest rate of enlistment in the U.S. armed forces of any U.S. state or territory. Out of the 60,000 people living on the island, more than nine-tenths of them are ethnically Samoan. However, since the mid-1900s, several American Samoans have migrated to the U.S., and today there are actually more American Samoans abroad than living on the islands. The islands are strongly influenced by U.S. culture, which can be seen in the TV shows, music, movies, and food on the island. But the Samoan way of life, or Fa'a Samoa, is still incredibly strong on the islands as well, and has been preserved despite the amount of foreign influence throughout its history. The society is still very communal, and family is considered the most important, and a respect for elders is highly valued. Most Samoans are fluent in the Samoan language, and traditional songs and dance styles are very popular today. In fact, both American Samoa and the independent state of Samoa have preserved Fa'a Samoa, the two halves are also predominantly Christian as a result of the missionaries sent from Europe in the 19th century. But the two Samoas also have a lot of differences. Germany held control over Western Samoa until 1914, when it was administered to New Zealand through a UN trusteeship mandate. Then, in 1962, Western Samoa became the first Pacific nation to gain its independence. In 1997, it changed its name from Western Samoa to the Independent State of Samoa. 
There are also several differences between the two islands on a cultural level. American Samoa uses American license plates, drives on the right side of the road, uses American standard electrical plugs, spends US dollars, and cheers for American football. But the craziest difference is the differences in the time zone. In 1892, the entire archipelago switched to east of the international date line in order to make it easier for European and American merchant ships to do business on the islands. But after the division of the archipelago, the two Samoas began trading with different countries. Since Samoa mostly traded with Australia, New Zealand, and Asia, countries that were operating business a full day ahead, in 2011, Samoa decided to switch back to the western side of the dateline to be on the same weekday as its trading partners. This means that even though the two Samoas are only 70 miles apart, Samoa is a full day ahead of American Samoa. And that pretty much wraps up my overview of the history of American Samoa. I could say so much more about the islands, but this is a mini so so I'm trying to keep it brief. And I guess this also concludes the mini-series on permanently inhabited U.S. territories. But some of you might be wondering, aren't there five U.S. territories today? And the answer is yes. Puerto Rico is the fifth U.S. territory, but we will not be covering its history in this mini sode series. Instead, we'll be giving a much more in-depth overview of the history of the island when we discuss the Spanish-American War in Season 2, so please be sure to look out for that in the near future. I really hope you guys enjoyed learning about U.S. territories. I really didn't know anything about these places or even that they were U.S. territories until recently. So I hope people discovered something new and are inspired to learn more about these places. And for my fellow Americans listening, I hope we're all able to understand the diversity and complexity of our country a little bit better and are able to conceptualize a more accurate map of the U.S. compared to the ones we're used to seeing in classrooms. One of my goals is to become more informed on the current events of U.S. territories and try to include the perspectives of Americans living in these territories when I discuss social or political issues in the U.S. So if you want to share something interesting about U.S. territories, feel free to tag us on social media and use the hashtag HDWNKT. We'd really love to continue learning more about the topics we discuss on the show. As always, thanks for listening and I'll see you next week. This has been an episode of How Did We Not Know That. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts from. You can also follow us on all social media, including YouTube, at How Did We Not Know That. If you thought our podcast was low quality, we know. We thought so, too. Help us improve the podcast by contributing to our Patreon. Thank you for listening, and see you guys next week.